Hey there YouTube, Superbrain AK here, and well, I've been playing with some batteries now that school is out, and I've been having some fun. We'll get to that in a second. First I want to show you what I did over here. Uh, currently, I've got my Tenergy TB6B go in there uh, it's currently discharging this cell here I basically got myself a um, banana to XT60 connector and then um, a battery side XT60 I plugged that into there and then a screw terminal just soldered that on made sure to mark the negative and that way I can connect little connectors so like one for this teeny tiny lipo from a um, wireless headset and yeah I've been having a lot of success with just the sheer low resistance of this setup. Um, before I was using these, which are your standard test leads, banana to alligator clip, and then just clipping on the two sides. And yeah, that was terrible. But this is completely universal, super low resistance, and yeah, really nice. I've got this one here for uh, these batteries. Some nickel metal hydride six cell packs. Though um, the Tenergy, because it uses peak charging, is not very good for refreshing slowly nickel metal hydrides so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do for multi-cell packs but my um, BC 700 is doing just fine I believe and you'll notice something right here right away what what? Well, what it is, it's a smackin'. It's a DC buck converter. 12 volts in, 3 volts out, and capable of 15 watts. So that I just soldered onto the barrel jack there that goes to its input there and then its output goes around over here to the male end of a barrel jack so I left the leads long because since this is epoxied and waterproof it's um, I don't want to cut the leads too short and have to solder new ones on that's just gonna get into a hassle um, but yeah, that gives 3 volts for the BC700, which is working pretty well. I like it very much. Um, yeah, so that allows me to connect the 12 volts, or to power it off of 12 volts, which is on my power distribution hub. And another thing I actually soldered up is I'm not sure if you guys can see it here but my my Honda here the 5 port 5 amp I believe uh, USB with smart um, sensing that goes on this 
wire to a 12 volt car cigarette lighter plug and that little adapter there is actually from a Dell um, car charger this is to convert the car charger plug which is super tiny it's no bigger than your average one average cigarette lighter plug which is crazy how efficient those are but anyway it converts the cigarette lighter to um, airplane 12 volts or 24 volts airplane airplane luxury whatever power supply so I just hacked off the connector there and put it on a screw terminal and shoved that in the breadboard which works pretty darn well so that's another thing so yeah I've been using those screw terminal blocks to plug into the breadboard because it's a lot easier a lot less hassle with making sure because this barrel jack wire is um, stranded so push shoving it in a, into a breadboard is not a good idea especially doing that repeatedly so yeah that's kind of my setup over here because that board is also powering um, the red LEDs there and my light bar so yeah so back to what I was doing over here this is a little something that I put together today it is a um, constant current um, linear constant current circuit um, I may have shown you guys that before using a transistor which is this guy and an LM317 or any other constant voltage source the only difference is this is a positive constant current source so this sources current as you can see on this little capacitor here is the positive output which is going to the voltage meter and the current meter which is here and that's uh, milliamps there 1.7 milliamps um, so yeah I'm not going to be able to explain perfectly how this is all set up but this is a PNP transistor and this is an LM337 versus the LM317 the LM337 is a negative voltage regulator so it works where the negative side or the ground is your um, positive terminal most positive source and yeah so it, it works in the same way so here is my positive voltage I'll talk about that little guy later is my positive voltage going to the set pot which goes to the adjust pin on the 337 and then goes through the resistor to the emitter of the PNP transistor the collector of the PNP transistor is then my positive output the base of the transistor goes to three diodes and those are all um, pointing this way because the PNP transistor is the most positive and the 337 is sinking current um, yeah it goes to actually it goes to a capacitor under the big one ohm resistor and then 
goes to the 337 and then that's adjust and um, output voltage are connected with a 220 ohm resistor and then its input is actually ground the proper ground so your positive goes to the transistor through the 337 to ground so the 337 is kind of backwards to where it would be and yeah let's talk about that little chip there Get it into focus. There we go. That's a tiny little guy. And no, this isn't a replacement 5 volt, um, you know, replacement 7805 thing that you'd buy. This is actually from. Oh. From one of these. Now, so it's a Griffin two port um, wall charger or car charger. Focus. So I don't know if this is a fake or not, but the power supply that it uses is this little guy, which is no bigger than the two port USB plug. See if I can grab that real quick. This is the USB socket and it is exactly that size. Crazy. So yeah. If you can see there doesn't have much capacitance. There we go. All the components are super small. And a 100 microhenry um, inductor. And on the other side is the 8 pin chip, which is actually one of these guys an FR9886. 23 volt, 2 amp, 380 kilohertz synchronous step down DC DC converter. Which I found pretty surprising. And I don't know if these are legitimate Griffin or not. But it seems pretty good for a knockoff if it, if it were one. Um, I got these in a bag from the. Um, the Humane Society thrift store they were just throwing it away so yeah kind of a good score so yeah it's synchronous which means it's got a sort of a push, push pull configuration I'll put a link to this data sheet but you can see here, got a high side and low side MOSFET. So it pushes and pulls current through the inductor. Um, let me go down some, some graphs. But yeah, it's like over 85% efficient if you're drawing more than 200 milliamps because synchronous will always use a certain amount of um, load basically it has a very high standby load which is pretty interesting because I was before trying to use Some of these guys, I forget if I 
talked about these already. But yeah, this is a another much higher current synchronous um, chip from a server power supply and put some solid capacitors, barrel jack, and some output leads. Um, the only problem is draws way too much current um, for what I wanted to use which is for the BC700. So I just opted for that other buck converter that was already pre-built and no fuss. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm using that and I had actually removed the pull down resistor in the 5 volt voltage divider network so that I can then attach a gosh um, potentiometer to adjust its output voltage so that I can finally trim the positive voltage going to the constant current second. So with those two paired together in series it is then a constant voltage constant current circuit which if you see currently at 2.8 volts goes up 4.1 awesome and it limits the current to 1.7 milliamps which if you haven't guessed already I am uh, uh, what's that called? Re slow charging a reviving a lithium pack, which is one of these, which was one of these guys, Plantronics 65358 01, 190 milliamp hour from the other type of wireless headset so yeah it's pretty crazy that these little circuits board circuit boards have two little um, protection ICs I don't know if I'd be able to get that focus or not I don't know if you can read that or not but I'll show you what the protection is but yeah this one was showing basically no connection all the other ones they just needed a little bit of voltage to turn them back on but this one was truly dead and flat which it was at 0.42 volts that's L but yep got quite a few of them and one of them I've already tested 130 milliamp hours so not bad especially with that setup it's been working pretty well so yeah before I run over 20 minutes and have to bunch them together um yeah that's a little update on this board no charging batteries and yeah so uh, thanks for watching make sure to like comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video take care